Hello there, and welcome back to another Tutorial Tuesday, where today we'll be taking a look at Ticono Vision. Wait. In this video, I will explain what the Kono Vision is, why we use it, and how to set it up in your drawing. This is a concept that builds further on the picture plane. I have done a video on this. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend watching that first. Otherwise, this video might be a bit difficult to understand. So, what is the Kono Vision? The Kono Vision is the area the viewer can see clearly when looking into a scene. The keyword in this pretty loose definition is clearly. Humans actually have a pretty wide field of view, which is around 200 degrees but only 2% of that is sharp. This is the part we are actually focusing on. To put it to the test, I want you to try to read the captions right now without moving your eyes. You can probably read two or three words, but the rest of the sentence starts to get a bit blurry. Does that mean we are limited to 2% of vision? No, or well, not really. 120% of this 200% is binocular vision. This is the area where the vision of both eyes overlap. Each eye covers about 160 degrees, limited mostly on the inside by your nose. So some people will see a bit less and some might see a bit more. This overlap makes it so that we feed our brain two images of the same scene. And by comparing the two slightly different images, our brain reconstructs a single image with depth. Again, putting it to the test, I want you to stick out a finger. You're gonna look at it with your left eye only and then with your right eye only, and then keep switching between them. What you can see is basically your finger jumping around. I swear I am not winking at you, by the way. So what your brain does is take both these images and then constructs one with depth. Although we can perceive depth across the full 120%, it's most accurate and natural in the middle 60. The other 45 degrees on each side where the eyes don't overlap is your peripheral vision. You can still register motion and change in brightness here, but you can't form clear images. This is pretty much the same for your vertical field of view. Our total vertical view is about 130 degrees, which is a lot smaller, but almost the full 130 degrees overlaps between both eyes. But again, in the middle 60% is where our vision is clearest and most accurate. And this is why the cone of vision is most often drawn at 60 degrees. That 60 degree cone matches the zone of vision where we naturally see without distortion, which is why perspective drawings based on a 60 degree cone feel most realistic. Now, how do we translate this on paper? Now, if we add the cone of vision to our picture plane from a few episodes ago, it would look something like this, with both the width and the height being around 60 degrees. So this would be our cone of vision. But if we want to translate that into our front view, our station point, which is the viewer or the camera as discussed, would kind of get lost. So what we can do is measure this distance from the viewer or the camera to the picture plane and then drop that straight down. So it would be somewhere around here. And with this construction, we can set up our cone of vision from scratch. To start, we of course, like always, need a horizon line. And somewhere on this horizon line, we can add our field of view. This field of view is not our entire vision, but it's the 120 degrees of overlap between our eyes. Next thing we do is determine the position of our station point and our central vision. This doesn't have to be extremely accurate. You can ballpark it, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So. Let's say that this is our station point. And then this would be our center of vision, which is basically the two degrees of actual sharp focus we have when looking at something. Similar to vanishing points, the station point will often be off the page. I'm just putting it on the page for this example right here. And from the station point, we can start drawing our cone at 60 degrees. It is important that you spread it equally across the center of vision. So it would be 30 degrees to the left and 30 degrees to the right. And where this crosses the horizon line is where we draw our circle to form the base of the cone. And you need one of these, which I think you guys call it a pair of compasses, which I find confusing because then what do you call this? 
And so inside our field of view, everything that's in the circle will be safe from distortion and will feel natural. That doesn't mean that objects that will be located here are very warped and very distorted, but you will see the further you move out, the more distorted it will get. And that's all she wrote. Next week, we will see how different camera angles and station points can influence the cone of vision. If you don't want to miss that episode, make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed today's video, leave a like down below. Also, let me know what you think of the face cam. Thank you so much for being here and don't forget to ink outside the box.